Welcome back to the channel. In this video my goal number one is to make sure that Git is really really simple for someone who is non-technical, but at the end of the day someone who is doing coding or writing articles should be able to use Git and platforms like GitHub or GitLab to be able to use what we call version control systems. We have used version control before in our lives without actually noticing. For example, when you use things like Dropbox, Google Drive, and Google Sheets, we have been using version control embedded in a graphical system. Now, businesses like GitHub and GitLab have sprung up to help software developers and people who also write articles, write books, to be able to reference earlier versions of their story. Have you written a story in your book before and then you end up crossing a couple of things because the grammar is wrong or because you want to reword your sentences and then five chapters into the book you think you got it wrong so you need to revert to what you had initially. Git allows you to do that because it keeps a version of your files. Now for example, I am writing a very simple glossary that will allow me to explain what Git is, and you can see right in my GitHub account, I'm going to show you how to open up your GitHub account, you are able to see something that says that we have two commits here. So if I click on these two commits, you're going to see that I have this version of my repository, which is basically this project, it's a repository, we have one and two. Now if I want, I can go to this particular version of my project and you will see it only had two lines here. Now if I go back and go to this second version, you will see that on top of what I had before, I added a number of lines here. I can be able to see what I changed and can also revert to what I previously had. Now we're going to be able to do that practically when we start seeing what Git is all about. So let's start by installing GitHub Desktop. This is a graphical user interface or GUI in short that will allow you to use Git without having to go to the command line. If you want to see how to use Git in the command line, I have a whole tutorial on my channel where you learn what Git is about, how to open up a GitHub account, and do all these other things just using the command line. Well, simply because the command line gives you a lot more power compared to what the desktop does, but the desktop version of Git allows you to do all the basics and it allows you to grow into using the command line. So don't worry thinking that you're going to learn less, this is going to help you to level up and then you can move on from there to something much more. So let's download it. For us to be able to use Git, we need to install it on our computers. Now for people who use Mac computers, that is Mac OS, and you're on the latest version, it usually comes with Git, and you can be able to just go to your terminal, and once you reach your terminal, if you type git git dash dash version, you'll be able to see what version of Git you have installed on your computer. And if you don't have that installed, there's a simple guide in here and this link will be in the description. You can be able to install it on your Windows because Windows doesn't come with Git automatically, so you need to be able to go to this link which is a git-cim and that will give you a Windows downloadable version of Git. So you will be able to download whether you have a computer that has 32-bit or 64-bit and then you would install that normally as you would any other Windows program. Now if you are on a Mac, you can be able to install it using something like Homebrew, where you install with just one line that says brew install git. Or you can also go to this same link which is uh, the download version of git, and you'll get the Mac version, download it and install it for your computer. So you'd be able to just click the download button here and then you would be able to install it. If you are on a system like Linux, you can also do that. You can just click on this Linux version 
and then you would be able to use something like this command that you have here. So you would copy this, come to your command line and do something like this. So you type sudo and then type apt-get space install space git. Of course that would ask you for your password because when you use the keyword of sudo, you are trying to install as an administrator. So you would put in your password and press enter and that would install your git on your computer. Once you've put in your password and hit enter, that will allow you to install git on your computer and you would be able to use it anywhere. So that's the part about installing git. If you want to see more of that, you can come to this tutorial and you'll be able to see how to install git on your computer. Now once we've installed git on our computers, the next thing we need to do is actually go to desktop.github.com and then of course this will detect what kind of operating system you're using and it will give you the big purple button for you to download. For example, I'm using Mac OS, so all I would need to do is click this button. But if you want the Windows version, you can also download it by clicking this little link down here. Now I'll click download for Mac OS, I'll save this file so that I can always use it. Now once this download is actually done, I can click open here, it will allow me to extract the files that are in there and then all I need to do is just double click on this icon or this little ball that we have here and I'll click open to grant permissions for GitHub Desktop to be installed on my computer. Please note, if we want to use the GitHub Desktop application time and again, we need to add it to our applications inside the applications folder. Now of course this will come up on our screen and we need to either have an account already opened up for us or we need to just sign in if we already have an account that's already open. So let's go ahead and create a free account on GitHub. Let's go ahead and click this up. When we click that link it will bring us to github.com right here and at this place is where we can sign up. So I'll sign up for a free account, I'll choose a username, I'll enter my email and then I'll choose to have a password so I'll allow my computer to choose a password for me and then I'll choose whether I want to get all of these and then of course there's some security questions that I need to add here and then I'll be able to create an account. The next step for me is I'm going to choose what kind of work I'm doing and this is basically to help GitHub make things better and for now all I'm going to say is I'm a teacher and I have no programming experience whatsoever and all I'm doing is I want to learn Git and GitHub and once I hit this button I'll be ready to start. So all I need to do is go and verify my email and then I'll be able to start using GitHub. Now once I'm in my email box I'll just click verify to verify my email and my account is created and I'm now ready to actually start using GitHub. So the one thing that I can do is I can either choose to have a number of organizations within my account so that I can manage different projects in those organizations or I can run everything inside one account. So what I'm going to do is just create a repository. When we use the word repository we're just talking about a project and the project that I'm going to talk about is writing about ants. So let's assume this is going to be where I'm going to write about ants and everything about them. I can give this a description and say ants are really cool insects. Read about them. So I can choose to have this project or this repository as public or private. Now the difference is with a private nobody will be able to access this project or see that it exists unless you have specifically invited them to see the project. Only you who is logged into this account will be able to see it, whereas if it's public it's actually searchable and people can find it as long as they know your GitHub name or if they find it in the results on GitHub. So we are going to create one that's public so that people can find about our really cool ants 
The next thing that we need to do is we can add a readme file that basically has simple things about your project, explaining what it's about, telling people how they can contribute, and so on. Now you can choose to add what we call a git ignore file, and those are files that should be ignored whenever you are going to publish files from your computer to your online platform. And you can also choose a license that helps you deal with your work in the best way, to avoid having copyright infringements by other people who might want to use your work. So let's create this repository, and of course you have your project writing about ants here. This is the readme file, you can always come and use the online platform and let's say maybe take this out, and then you go and add what we call as a commit message. So here you'll be able to say remove, remove words. You need to use something that's descriptive for people to be able to understand what your commit is all about. So I do not need these words, they are superfluous. So I'm going to commit this directly into my branch, and now you see we don't have that word, we have what is new, but we can be able to go into our history and we'll be able to see what happened the first time. What did we have? We had this, and then the next time in our history we were able to, we'll be able to see what you changed about your particular project. So for now you can see we remove these words, whatever is in green is what's current, whatever is in red is what has been removed. So you can be able to make comments about this and you can make so many commits right in the GitHub platform right here, so you don't need to download anything or use it. But what happens when you want to do your work offline? Maybe you're working in a remote area and you still want to have versioning inside your project, but you do not have internet. That's where GitHub Desktop comes in. You'll be able to make the different commits and have a history that's being tracked, yet you're waiting to have the internet connection come up and then you'll send all your details online. So let's see how to do that. So we are going to come back here and we'll click sign in, which will open up this link for us, we'll say authorize desktop, and that is going to allow us to, I'll open the link that has come up, and I'm going to click continue to configure, or uncheck this depending on my preference, so for now I'll uncheck it, I'll click finish. Now this is going to show me all the repositories that I have available inside my account, so I can either create a new repository from local, or I can clone, which is basically get another repository from someone else who is also on the GitHub platform, maybe you like what they are doing, so you can copy from them and make something your own, or you can create your own repository on your hard drive and then later push it up into the cloud, or you can actually choose to copy an existing repository from the cloud and then drive it to your computer. So what I'm going to do is just click what we have here, and I'm going to copy this, and all I'm going to do is allow this to come onto my computer, and it's going to go inside my documents, inside GitHub, and create a folder there, so I'll click clone, and you're going to see that we have our local folder with all this information, you can click show in finder, and you'll see that we have this little readme file, I can open up this file by right clicking it and opening it with an editor of my choice, so for example, I'm going to choose to open it up with Visual Studio Code, because I already have this open on my computer, but you can open it with Notepad or any other program that finds this file extension readable. So I'm going to open this up in Visual Studio Code, and then we'll be good to go. So Visual Studio Code has opened this up, and you will see that we have our title here, and we have our description, so what I'm going to do is actually change this and make this uppercase and remove everything else that was in dashes. I'll save this 
and then let's go back. If you look at my Visual Studio Code, it's telling me that there's something that has changed inside my project. So I'm going to go and look inside my GitHub desktop, and you'll see that this line was changed, and these are the changes that were made. So what I can do at this point is I can just go and make what we call a commit message. So I can say remove dashes from title. The title does not need dashes. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to click commit to main, and that has already gone inside my history. Now GitHub Desktop is so smart that it gives you this option, it says please push this to the origin, so it's basically telling you push this in the cloud so that if in case your computer crashed, you will be able to pick that up from wherever. So all I'm going to do is click push, and once I push this it's going to get the copy from my local computer with all the history, and it's going to send it to the cloud version. So I'm going to just look here at history, and you're going to see that when we first made this repository we had this, we now have this version that was later changed, and now we have removed the dashes, so we are able to go within the history and find out what changes have been made, what new files have been included, what did we mess up, and how can we bring it back. So let me go onto the online version, and I'm going to go back inside this part that says code, and you're going to see that our title no longer has those dashes, and we have this message from our local computer that says remove dashes from title, and if we want we can still browse the history, and we can be able to follow up on what changes were made in our files. So you can see from this that the big win for us is just being able to see the history and be able to make changes. So what happens if I decide to make some changes online, and I move to a faraway country, and I need to access the new version of my code. So let's make some changes here, and say this is a quote that was done by John Doe in 1956. So what we're going to do is we're going to cite author, and we'll say add the citation. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to commit those changes, which is basically say let's record the changes, and this is what it looks like. When I come back to my GitHub desktop here, I have this button here that says fetch origin, and when I click it, it is going to go and look in the online version, and then it's going to tell me there are some changes that we do have inside our project. So what I can do is I can click pull origin, and I am going to pull everything that has changed, and I'm going to put it in my local version of the file. And you can see right now we have site author, and we have the message that tells us add the citation, and you can see the changes that were made is we added someone inside our project. So if I go back to my editor, you see I didn't have to refresh anything, it automatically had this refreshed, and I can make more and more changes. Now this is really good, making changes and having the history is good, but what happens when we want to go off this train track, and make a couple of changes on the side, then bring them back? This usually happens when we have a number of people working on the project. So let's imagine this is a story we were writing, we gave it to our editor to look at, so we have an editor, that's one party, we have me the author who would probably like to make some changes, but I would like the editor maybe to see them a little later, and maybe we have someone who is reading the book, let's say who is a publisher, and they want to make some changes and so on, so they can be able to also have their own version of this book. So that's where we come in with the word that is branches. We are branching away from the main project, but later we are going to bring back every change and add it in. So how do we make branches? Let me go back to my GitHub desktop, 
The way we make branches is we can come to any project that we have here, click this icon and say new branch. Now in the new branch we're going to have the editor version, so we'll create this branch here, and inside the editor version if I come back to my story here and I'll say the editor made changes, and save this, and the next thing that we're going to do is come back to our GitHub desktop, and we're going to go and see here the changes, and you say editor changes, say the editor likes our work, and then I'm going to commit this to the editor branch. Now what happens, we have this new button here, we also have it here which says publish the branch, remember when we publish or when we push, we are sending information to the online version, so I'll click publish branch, and it's going to push it to the origin, basically the online version, so this has been pushed to the origin, let's go back to our browser version, I'm going to reload this, and you're now going to see that we have this little drop down and we have what we call the branches, so we have the main branch which still has the original work, it hasn't changed, but if I go to the editor branch you're going to see that it has the editor's changes, and in the history you can be able to see editor's changes. But if we go to the main branch and click on the history, you're going to see we don't have that part of the editor making changes. So we can make a number of branches depending on what features we want to add to our project, or when we want to do something different and later merge it. Now I've brought in a new word which is merging, it's basically the English form of just getting something, and putting it inside your same project. So we can actually merge different things together, so right here I'm going to go to my main branch, so if we want to get our branch which is editor, and then push it inside our main branch, we make something called a pull request, and in short that is PR, so we can always go to the branch that we have here, and we can say compare branches, or we can say create pull request. This will open up in the online version, and it will give us this new dialog box that shows us what changes were made down here, what files did we change, and then we can write a message here with the proper title, and we can write a message here showing why we made various changes, and you can see that we are comparing two branches, we are comparing the main, and we are comparing it with the editor. So I can click create pull request here, and this is going to trigger a message to the owner of that project that there is a new pull request, someone wants to make some changes from their particular branch. Now I can merge this pull request after viewing the changes that have been made, and I think I appreciate them, I can either make some comments here, or I can decide to merge this pull request. So I'll click merge pull request, then I'll confirm the pull request, and now when we go back to our code, and we look in the main branch, you're going to see that we have the editor made changes, which was not the case before. So if I go back to my local file, and then go to the main branch, you'll see it's telling me fetch from origin, Fetching does not change what you have locally, it just basically goes to check if there are any new changes, and then it will give you the option of actually pulling the origin down local. Now depending on the branches that you have or the active branch, it is going to pull branch to branch, so it's going to pull the main to the main, so I'll click pull origin, and when I go back inside my editor, you will see that the changes of the editor have actually been pulled inside my main branch. So, so far we've learned about merging, we've learned about pull requests, we've learned about branching out and making changes, and we've seen the essence of having a history inside our different projects. We've been able to work with our own projects for now, but let's imagine somebody else gave us a link to their own project and said, please go ahead 
look at the project, find out what you like, then make some changes and then make a PR back or make a pull request to the project. So we come to the concept that's known as forking. So let me just go and try out one of those projects. So let's say this is the link to the project that was given to us. It does not belong to us, but we can make a copy of it, thereby forking it, make changes and then make some pull requests back. So the first thing that we're going to do to this project is we cannot directly edit it. So we need to first and foremost fork it. So I'm going to fork this project. Basically, I am just copying the project and making my own copy. Now I am able to make changes to this particular copy. So what I'm going to do is go back to my GitHub desktop. I'm going to go to File and then I'm going to say Clone Repository. So what I'm going to do is just copy this link of our new project. I'll paste the link there and I'm going to say Clone. Now you'll see we have this question here that says, are you planning to use this fork? You have changes on this branch. Would you like, what would you like to do with them? Do you want to contribute to the parent project, which is this? And I'll say yes. If I don't intend on making any contributions to that project, I would say for my own purposes. So I intend to work with the parent project, so I'll click continue. And that of course is going to allow me to have this showing. That is good. So the next thing that we need to do is go back to our desktop we're going to go and you'll see that we have this GitHub desktop already here. So I'm going to open this up inside my editor. So I'll click this, open it up in Visual Studio Editor, and you'll see that we have all these different things. So I'm going to make some changes here. And you can see that if I preview this, we have made some changes to our titles, we've given this a second hierarchy, we've made this bold, so I can do the same thing for all the others, like clone, if I make these changes here, you'll be able to see that this is bold and it's looking a little bit better, so those are good changes to have on a project. What I'm going to do is save this and then when I come back to my GitHub desktop here, you'll be able to see the changes that I've made and I can be able to say making better titles and that's my title of my commit and I'll say add headings to and bold all titles. What I'm going to do is just commit this to my main. It's usually not a good practice to commit to the main, you'd rather make a branch and then push those changes and then merge them later because you do not know what someone is doing at the other end. You would like to have the main always be a place where people can get a fresh copy before any other changes have been merged in. For now I'll create commit to command and then you'll see they'll ask me push commits to the origin remote. This basically means I'm going to push to my own fork of the project, so I'll click push origin. And you'll see, let's go and check online. If we come back to our fork, we are on our fork right now and I reload this, you're going to see that the changes we've made are actually visible right here. You can see from this title and this one. Now you'll also see it says this branch is one commit ahead of this other project where we forked from. Now if we want to make a pull request, we can just click this little pull request button and that will make a request to the original fork. However, we can also come to the repository and we are going to say create pull request. So I'll click create pull request and you'll see that it's going to compare the original file which is on this account inside this and inside the main branch and we're going to compare it with my own personal branch. So maybe we don't want to commit to the main branch, we want to commit to another branch, we can always change those and that will make it easier for us to commit to the branch that we want to. 
So what I'm going to do here is just click create pull request. I'll use the same things that I had here in my own version. The changes are still available, I can preview them, then I'll create pull request. So once I create pull request, you'll see that here I don't have the merge button because I'm not the owner of the project. So all I need to do is just wait for the owner of the project to accept my pull request and that will be merged into the project that I forked. So we usually call this project which you have forked from, we call it the upstream. So the upstream project will have to verify and merge my pull request. So luckily our pull request got merged and you'll see that now this is merged and if we go to the code of this you'll see that it has better making titles, we're not on our project anymore, we are on the upstream, we are on the original forked project. It has everything that has merged in, you'll see the message here says there was a merge pull request from this particular person and we can now look at the history and we have this merged from this person and this is the commit, we can look at the changes that were made and we can see whatever is good and whatever is bad. So we can make comments to that if we want to and that's how we work with forking a project, making changes to it and then pushing back the changes. So these are the basics of GitHub desktop and using Git and GitHub and add version control to them. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the content from here don't forget to leave a question in the comment section at the bottom, otherwise 